Okay, so now we're going to look at The Tuft of Flowers by Robert Frost. Very different to the previous two videos where we looked at two dark poems. Tuft of Flowers, much more positive, but there are elements of darkness within it that you can use within your essay. Okay, I'm going to explain the poem. It's a bit longer, so bear with me. I went to turn the grass once after one who mowed it in the dew before the sun. Okay, so his job was very simple. He had gone to turn grass after it had been mowed by another guy earlier in the day. We know it was really early because there was dew on the ground. The dew was gone that made his blade so keen before I came to view the leveled scene. Okay, we talked about how frost creates scenes. Um, if you can imagine walking into a field and the grass has been completely cut. It has been cut with a blade. His job now is to turn it. I looked for him behind an aisle of trees. I listened for his whetstone on the breeze. Okay, one thing we're going to notice is the narrative voice. It's a first person narrative again. So he's looking for the other guy. He's looking for human companionship. He's looking for human company. Okay, so he looked for him. He listened for him, but couldn't find him. But he had gone his way, the grass all mown, and I must be as he had been, alone. Okay, the word alone generally has a negative connotations. Okay, and in this part of the poem, it is quite negative. We talked about the dark aspects of the poem, which leads us into the next couplet. As all must be, I said, within my heart, whether they work together or apart. Okay, that's a very negative outlook on life, that no matter where we are, or who we're with that we're always alone okay and a suggestion here that he's quite down about this that he must be alone but he accepts the fact that he must be alone okay so that leads us into the next uh part of the poem but as i said it swift there passed me by on noiseless wing a wildered butterfly okay so we see nature come into it here so we often see frost change his mind what changed his mind a butterfly landed and that changes things seeking with memories grown dim overnight some resting flower of yesterday's delight the butterfly is looking for somewhere from yesterday that he had been okay it's no longer there and once i marked his flight go round and round as where some flower lay withering on the ground. Okay, the flower withering the ground, probably quite a negative uh, look, a flower uh, disintegrating, okay, that humans had come and destroyed nature. And then he flew as far as I could see, and then a tremulous wing came back to me. I thought of questions that have no reply. Again, shows the type of person that, uh, Frost, an analytical type of person, questions that have no reply, and would have turned to toss the grass to dry. But he turned first and led my eye to look at a tall tuft of flowers beside a brook. Okay, so what's happening here is that despite the fact that the whole scene has been leveled, that there was a tuft of flowers left behind. A leaping tongue of bloom the scythe had spared. Now this, the sibilance here, we can get the scythe had spared. Um, there's a sense here of personification as well of the scythe that it had, the scythe decided to spare this. Beside a reedy brook, the scythe had bared. So he had bared everything else around it and left this tuft of flowers. Was it by, by accident or was it by design? Did he leave it for the butterfly? So I'm gonna to go to the next part of the poem. I left my place to know them by their name, finding them butterfly weed when I came. The mower and the Jew had loved them thus. Now, he has come to the conclusion that the mower loved this tuft of flowers so much that he left them by leaving them to flourish, not for us. Not yet to draw one thought of ours to him, but from sheer morning gladness at the brim. Okay, the mower was really glad and he was happy, so he left us. The butterfly and I had lit upon, nevertheless, a message from the dawn. Okay, so it's as if he's receiving messages. The mower may not be there, but he has left a message. That made me hear the wakening birds around and hear his long scythe whispering to the ground. So now he's starting to hear the birds and there's a sense that he's at one with nature. There's a more positive element to how the, the poet is feeling at this point. And feel a spirit kindred to my own. So even though they're not there, a kindred spirit, you don't have to be beside them. That you're connected in other ways other than in physical ways. So that henceforth I work no more alone. So... The speaker has now decided he has gone back on his initial assertion that we're always alone, that he's not alone, even though physically he's alone, that he's connected. But glad with him, I worked as with his aid, 
okay, so he feels now he's working with his aid, and in many ways he is, because the mower cut the grass, he's turning the grass, they have done this job together. And Weary saw it at noon with him in the shade. So, when he seeks his shade at noon, he feels like he's resting with him. So no matter where the mower is, he's probably resting at this point, and he feels a connection. Okay, we're going to go to the next part. And dreaming as it were held brotherly speech with one whose thought I had not hoped to reach. Okay, now he feels as if they're brothers and they're speaking to one another. Men work together, I told him from the heart, whether they work together or apart. Now, that same line is repeated, but it's very important. It's all about perspective. Initially, he told us we were alone, whether we work together or apart. Now he's telling us that we're always together, whether we work together or apart. And it shows you how humans, we can be very simply, we can change our mind and how we see things is very important. We know from the fact that Frost suffered from depression, we can see how things may have seen differently. And it's all about how we look at things. Okay, so ends up a positive poem. There are dark elements within it. The scenery is very, very clear. There's a lot of symbols and the narrative voice throughout is the eye, the first person. So... Put that in your plan. See, can you put your third and fourth paragraph together? See if this helps. If not, again, you can contact me at any time. I hope things are working out. And again, best of luck.